In this video, I'll be demoing a an 8-loop double braid. Uh, this is essentially a um, braid that would have historically been done by two people standing next to each other, each braiding a 4-loop square braid. That, that would have been kind of unusual. The classic ones in the old loop braiding manuscripts were were generally doubled five-loop braids, so two people standing next to each other braiding a five-loop, or maybe seven, but anyway, a five-loop braid. To, to make it easier to learn, um, I'm showing it as a, an eight-loop braid. It has pretty much the same structure. It's, it's a little unbalanced, as in any even number of loop braid, and that one transfer will go through two loops, and another transfer will go through one loop on both sides of the braid. So it's partially plain weave and partially a twill. I'm starting with a divided section um, where all the transfers will be taken without turning the loop and that results in, a, in two braids at once. Um, oh, I'm going to check now by lifting the upper shanks of all my right loops and I see that yes, they all, all those upper shanks go to the upper part of the braid, the lower ones go to the lower. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a cold. Um, that's a good thing to do once in a while when you're doing the divided braid, just to make sure that you haven't made a mistake and, the, and that you don't have any loops crossing, any shanks crossing down to the other side, which you don't want for the divided part. So I will continue. Um, I'll start here with taking each loop, taking each transfer with no turn to the loop. This is what makes a divided braid. And then I'll join up and show taking them all with a turn. The braid has four loop transfers, two on each side. The first one, the index finger of the opposite hand will be the operator finger. It goes through the first two loops, D and C, D and C loops. Then it goes through the B loop. It will be taking this B loop, this, this red loop, and in pretty much all my double braids, I always take from the B finger. It's much easier than taking from the C finger um, because the finger is more agile. <laughs> and um, normally it's the center finger. If, you were, if I were braiding a 10-loop braid with a loop on the thumb, the B loop would be the central finger. There, with four loops, you could theoretically just as easily take from the ring finger each time, but that is more, it's more awkward. Let me move the camera a little bit. Um, I wonder if I should have the... if I'm too close to the camera. Okay, let's just start. So I'm going to go through two loops, these two loops, and take the red loop, the B finger loop, from within the loop, bending down, bending my finger down to take the lower shank, pulling it through and releasing. Then immediately, the B finger goes into the C loop to shift it, and the C finger goes into the D loop. So those two loops shift up, and I place the taken loop on the D finger. So it it got it came through these two loops with no turn. Its upper shank stayed uppermost. It did not turn over and become the lower shank. That first loop transfer is done. Now the second loop transfer is going to happen. The second loop transfer will be this B loop will go through in that direction, it will go through the um, index loop. To accomplish that, I'm going to reach behind. I'm going to go from behind through the index loop. And I, I really I pull it forward because I find this the easiest way to lift the loop through is to actually pull the top shank of the A loop out of the way and then stick my finger straight into the B loop and lift it up, releasing the loop. Immediately, my B finger walks into the A loop and shifts it down, and the loop gets put onto the A finger here with no turn. There are other ways to do that move. Um, let's put it back. One way would have been I just undid the move. One another way to do it that I have done in the past, I sometimes have found it easier, is to for this second move to turn my hand, put my finger through that loop. That is actually the same 
as before. It's just we're just seeing it in a different angle. But then I go into the uh, B loop from behind it. This is I'm inserting my finger from a different direction than I did before. Pull it through, shift, and put my A finger into it that way. That also works. And then turn it back. I'm gonna do it over again. I I think I recommend so you don't get confused with turning upside down and back and forth, just doing it the first way I showed, unless for some reason it's, it's really awkward for you. So that would be pulling the upper shank of the A loop out of the way, reaching into the B loop, lifting it up and releasing, shifting the A loop down, and placing the transferred loop onto the A finger. Okay, that's the second transfer. Now comes the same Three and four are, are the same in mirror image on the other side. So through two loops, take the B loop from within the loop, pull it off, and then shift, shift. And this is essentially like a shift to the placing the loop onto the D finger. Fourth transfer from behind, and then it pull the upper shank of the A loop out of the way, stick my finger into the B loop, lift it up, it's coming through the A loop, shift, and place. It, the, the shank that was uppermost before is still uppermost, and you can check this, it should go to the top of layer of braid. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now I've done all four transfers, and before I can tighten, the braid, I need to do the loop exchange, which effectively connects this sub-braid with this sub-braid, unifying them into one braid. To do so, I will place the, the right D-loop onto the left, and then lift the left one over it. They just crossed one through the other. The um, right loop came through the left loop. Uh, Either the other way would work too. It's best to only to consistently well within a braid you should only do it one way. I I always do it that way unless I have a good reason not to, so I don't get mixed up by with my direction. Okay, so at that point you can tighten and that tightens all the loops. Um you don't have to tighten each transfer as you do with a square braid. Or at least I find I don't. Uh this last when you exchange those two loops, essentially now this red loop is pulling against all the uh, loops it came from, and the same with the, the loop that came over to the left hand is tightening against these three loops here, and the whole braid tightens. Um, okay, let's do a few more of those, of those open transfers, those unturned, uh, unreversed transfer cycles, so through two, take the B loop, shift, shift, place, second transfer, through one, again take the B loop, shift, place, third transfer, through two, take the B loop, oops, I was doing it from above, that would have turned it from within it, take the B loop, Shift, shift, place, fourth transfer, coming or going through it from behind, and essentially I just pull the upper shank out of the way, lift the loop, shift, place, loop exchange, and tighten. Check to make sure yeah, that the two halves are not joining. Do a few more. So next cycle. First transfer through two. Take the B loop with no turn. Oh, shift, shift, and place. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I have to do this while I have my cold. That's just how the timing is working out. So, um... <laughs> I really wouldn't choose to, but otherwise I'll never get it done. So then, um, second transfer, pulling the 
top shank of the A loop out of the way, lifting the B loop through, shift, place, third transfer, through two, oops, I, I was getting ready to do it again, through two, take the B loop with no turn, shift, shift, place, fourth transfer, pulling the A loop out of the way, and I'm coming from behind, this is just an easier way, lifting the B loop through, shift, place, Let's see how long my loop has gotten. I'm going to rearrange it because it looks as if the header cord is not exactly in the middle of it. There, it's more in the center, which it really should be when you join it up. You do not want to have, when you join it, which I'm going to, I guess, do now, you don't want to have the upper part of the loop be longer or shorter than the lower part, or it will not make a neat, it will join one half, will, one side will be loose and gappy. Okay, now for joining this into a solid rectangle braid, which is one of many shapes you can do with a double braid. I could also make a hollow braid, a very wide and flat braid. There's many kinds, but this is sort of very basic. It'll be the exact opposite of what we were just doing in that every transfer will be turned. And that's what makes a solid, sort of, I guess maybe it has a sort of figure eight uh, structure in, to it, but it's it's very solid. The upper and lower surface will be very well knit together, very interlaced. Now I'm going to turn all my transfers, and I'm going to turn them, I, I call it from above, even though it doesn't always look from above. The, the second and fourth transfers don't look like that, but they... Anyway, they match the from above transfer that I start with, so I stu still call them from above. I will be turning the loop by taking the upper shank of the loop from above the loop. This will turn it over, giving it a clockwise turn. Pulling it through, it now turned over, and you ought to be able to see that. Shift, shift. I mean, if you're bra the braider, you ought to be able to see it. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Um, but the, the loop, the shank on the top of my finger goes to the bottom of the braid, and uh, vice versa. Place. Okay. That loop turned in a clockwise manner. The next transfer, coming from back here, the loop must turn in a counterclockwise manner. You don't have to think about that when you're making a square braid, because on each side you just take the loop from above, but you are turning it in a different direction on the two hands. Here you do have to think about it. It doesn't happen automatically less intuitive, but in order to make the next turn be countered to the first one, the loop will have to turn in the opposite direction before it turned this way, now it will have to turn that way. I still call it a turn from above, even though, well, one way to take it would be to reach all the way down and to grab that lower shank and take it twisting. It's hard to get it off the finger, though, and I find the easiest way to give the loop that turn, to accomplish the turn, is to take it in exactly the same way I did for the non-turned transfer for the straight or open one. Take it the same way, pull the upper shank of the A loop out of the way, reach into the B loop, lift it up, shift, and then turn it. I just turn it on the operator finger a bit. You don't even have to turn it very far because the finger it's going on, it will go onto the index finger with a turn. The index finger is very capable of reaching down into it this way and taking it off. It, it, it accomplished its turn. It has a half twist. And to me, that's the easiest way to do it. There's other ways to do it. And as long as it gets onto that finger with a half twist in a countered direction from the first transfer, you're fine. Okay, same thing on the other hand. Third transfer through two, and this time it's correct to reach above it. I don't know why I kept wanting to do that before. I reach above the B loop, bend down, take the bend the finger down, and take the upper shank from above, pulling it off. Shift, shift, place. You can see the the twist in the in the loop there, and I often do check that because as I'm braiding, I'll suddenly think, "Whoa, did did I turn that loop?" 
you know, pretty often I space out and don't remember if I gave it a turn or not, and, and I have to look. You have to look and see. Oh, yeah, okay, it has a turn. Okay, fourth transfer. Pulling the upper shank of the red loop forward to get it out of the way. Pulling the B loop through that. Shift, turn, place that loop. Received its turn. You can see the cross in the loop. Exchange. This links the two halves together, and now I can tighten. There, that's the first. Um, I do want to check to see if my loop is correctly positioned. Looks pretty good. Um, all these turns that just happened, the the aren't beaten back to the fell yet. Um, the next cycle that loops go through will will push back these X's and these crosses in the in the shanks of the loops. They'll pull them, beat them back, and really connect the upper and lower surface into one. Okay, so next cycle through two, take the B loop from above to turn it. Shift, shift, place. Second transfer. Through one, so I'm the B loop will come through one loop this time. Lifting the B loop, shift, turn, place. Other hand, third transfer through two, take from above, shift, shift, place. Fourth transfer through one, take. Well, I call it with a turn from above because here I am turning it. Place and exchange. Tighten. Next cycle through two. Take from above. Shift. Place. Through one. <coughs> Things countered to the previous turn. Place. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> third. <coughs> third to transfer through two. Take from above. With a turn. Shift. Shift. Place. Fourth transfer. Turn. Shift. Place. Exchange. Here I have done a few cycles. I want to just check. I'm a little far from the. I'm going to take it off. Check my loop and make sure the base of it, where I'm joining it, is even. Because if it's not even, it, it, it won't look good <laughs> when it, it'll join with being too loose on the bottom or too loose on the top, which on the bottom that I wouldn't see, so I want to, I always want to check at this point. Okay, I'll try to talk less and just do this slowly so you can see the moves and maybe be doing it along with me. So, I'll just say first transfer, turned, second transfer, Third. Fourth. Exchange. Tighten. Next cycle. One. probably say turned because that's what I and everybody has trouble remembering to do. It's, it becomes very natural to do both the turned and the straight transfer and I literally do have a mantra every time I make a braid and I say straight or turned or at least the one that I 
I say the one I tend to forget. So here's the second transfer turned. That's what I'll say instead of one, two, three, four. So turn. Turn. Exchange. I recommend for your first year or so at least of braiding to say exchange. That's another easy thing, at least it was for me, to forget to do and um, it's, it's not happy. It's not a good thing to forget. Yeah. You'll know one way you can tell you forgot it is if when you go to, you do your next cycle, everything seems fine until the very end when you tighten and it's very awkward and hard to tighten. It usually means you forgot to do the previous exchange and tightening. Well, you maybe tightened, but you didn't accomplish anything. Um, okay, so turn. 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 Exchange. Turn. Turn. Exchange. Turn. Exchange. Okay, a little note about color order. The way that I am braiding this, the order in which I'm taking the transfers, which is somewhat arbitrary. The transfers can be done in all other kinds of orders, resulting in very tiny differences to the overs and under. It, it, those, it would still be an, what I call an M shaped braid, but the way, the order that I'm doing this, that I'm showing, the way that makes the colors line up on the braid, in case you want to organize your colors, um, say, say you wanted to do light, dark, light, dark, light, dark going down the braid, or um, you wanted to have a rainbow order, or, you know, from 
orange to, if you wanted a certain kind of order in your braid. The order that they line up in the braid is this. Um, one, if this is the first one, you can arbitrarily pick any loop to be first, but um, it's easiest for this braid if you pick one of the two middle fingers, because then two, three, and four will all be on the same hand before you go over to the other hand. So if start with one, this will be the loop that follows it. This will be the first loop going down the braid, the first color to show. This will be the second. This will be the third. This will be the fourth. It repeats on the other hand. It's, it's not very intuitive looking at the braid because you might think looking at the braid, looking at your hand, that the order and the, the colors in the braid would be ye yellow, white, orange. But no, it won't be yellow, white, orange, red. It will be white, yellow, orange, red. So the yellow and the orange are actually next to each other in the actual braid. Same on the other hand. So this this um, this will be the fourth loop. It will be followed by the loop. It, in you can check this. You can prove it to yourself. Well, you can prove it to yourself by watching the loops come off the fingers. That's the order that they follow each other on the fingers too. The next loop on this finger will be the yellow loop. The next loop on this finger will be the orange loop. The next loop on this finger will be the red loop as I go through the repeated cycles. And the loop on this finger will always be the one to jump off and end up on the other hand at the end of the cycle. Same thing on this on this hand. So this red loop in the braid will be followed by the purple dark purple loop here, which will be followed by the light purple loop here, which will be followed by this loop in this loop. So we'll see that in the next cycle. Um, this white loop on this hand at the end of the next cycle will be on the little finger. The yellow loop will be on this finger. It will have traded. They will have traded places. Well, they, this loop will have advanced up to here. The white loop will advance over to the other hand, and this purple loop will be on the little finger, trailing after the red loop, which will have moved up here. That's just how this structure works. It's it's. You don't have to pay any attention to it if you just want to make random colors in your braid. That's fine. It'll look great. But if you want to plan them, if you want to lay them out a certain way, that's the order they follow. Okay, enough of that. So here goes the next cycle. Returning. I have to remind myself. So from above, shift, place, turn. And turn. Exchange. And tighten. <coughs> White loop is over here. The dark purple loop has jumped over here. It's following the red loop up. The yellow loop is now here number two, and it's going to be the next, it, after the next cycle, it will be on the little finger of the other hand, and we'll be following the white loop up along. So the yellow in the braid will always be following the white, and so I, each of the colors will keep continually following the one before it in a big cycle, and that's how they, the, the order that they will line up down the braid. Oh, maybe I could even show that. Here we go. You look at one column. So here is white. You, you, you just look at one column at a time to see this. There is white, followed by yellow, orange, red, followed by the dark purple, and so on. Okay, I think I'm just about out of time. Thanks for watching. Um, the braid shows. Here's the loop at the top that we did with a divided braiding. And here's the solid. Oh, and here's the rectangle. There it is. Plump it together to make it fill out.